Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools. Let's build, where we help scrappy bootstrappers just like yourself figure out how to automate their work and overcome some of the hurdles that they're facing. Now, before we dive into today's video, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We got lots of videos up there that go through all, all sorts of low code and no code solutions, including Retool, Shopify API, uh, Airtable, Data Studio, as well as many others. If you don't see what you're looking for up here, feel free to send a email over to feedback at bootstrapping.tools. We'll be happy to take a look at that app and possibly make a video just for you. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going over how you can send a Slack message using a triggered event through Google Sheets, which is also going to be using Google Apps Script. So that's right, we're going to be using Google Sheets. So if you're using task management in Google Sheets, or you're just doing something in there uh, to, to manage your operations, uh, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to use Google Apps Scripts, uh, the triggered events in there to take a look at a specific field. And when you update that, it's going to trigger a message that we send over the Slack so that you can notify any members of your team that a change has occurred. And it makes a lot of sense, right? Slack, where everybody's basically on Slack nowadays. I mean, you know, there are definitely people who aren't on Slack, but there's a large majority of people that are on Slack. So this should be really helpful uh, for you and everything that you're doing in your company. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. So up on the screen, we got a... Uh, template, uh, just some sample data that I put in here. We're going to focus on task management in this case. Let me make this a little bigger for everybody. Uh, we have a task column and a signing column and a status column. What we're going to do is we're going to actually trigger everything off of the status column here. Now, what you're going to need uh, before we get started over here is you're going to have to have uh, your Slack um, account open and just make sure you go over to the api.slack.com slash apps and go to your apps. You can build a new one. You can create a new app over here. I already have one created, uh, G Sheet Notifier. But once you do create your app and you dive into your settings for it, there's an option called incoming webhooks over on the side. This is the one that we're going to use because it's really easy uh, to set up. Just click on that. And then what this allows you to do, you're going to activate this. Uh, you're going to create a new webhook where with that webhook is going to be tied to a specific channel. Uh, the channel that we have here is demo G sheet Slack notification. Uh, and what's going to happen is whenever you hit that specific webhook, it's going to send messages directly into that specific channel. So if you have a project that's going on, or if you just have a general tab, um, that that's for notifications like this, you can just use this webhook to send messages to it based on whatever is going on in your Google spreadsheet. So once you have this set up, uh, you're going to have to copy this webhook URL and we're going to use that in our code. Before we do that, let's uh, let's hop over to our spreadsheet over here. We're going to be using Google Apps Script. So click on the tools option in the uh, menu bar and then select script editor. What that's going to do is that's going to bring you over to the Google Sheet. So in the Google Sheet, uh, it's going to default to my function and uh, that's basically where we're going to start. So we're going to change this. Let's, uh, let's call this send Slack message. All right. And we're going to test this out first. So that URL that we had before, let's go back. Let's grab that. Go back to our code. We're going to say declare URL by saying bar URL. We're going to paste that URL in there. Once we have that, uh, now we're going to create a message or a payload, uh, option for it. And that payload is pretty simple when we look into this it's really just text as the variable and then you're just going to say whatever you want within there so it's going to look just like that so let's go set our payload equals i'm going to set this to an object so text and we'll keep it simple just like in the words hello world it's probably going to be the cleanest uh, code that we write all day today um, so we're going to set that to payload now we're going to create headers and the headers here, we just want to pass through content type, content type. And then that's going to be application JSON. And the reason we're doing this is because in the documentation over here, it says the sample request is content type application JSON. And we're, that's the way that we want to pass it through. And we're going to post it. Um, we're going to make that request as a post request method. So right below here. Go ahead and our options equals 
headers is equal to headers. You don't have to do it. You can do this all in just one shot, uh, but I prefer to do it separately just to keep it nice and clean. Uh, now we have method, which is going to be set to post. And then we're going to have payload, which is going to be set to the JSON stringified version of our payload. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to use the URL fetch app, uh, which is a library that Google App Scripts uh, gives, provides to us, makes it really easy for us to use. We're going to pass through the URL, which is the webhook URL that we created specifically for that channel. And we're going to pass through our options. All right, so when we run this, what we expect to happen is that within our Slack uh, environment, demo G sheet, Slack notification, this kind of just go ahead and send the message here that just says, hello world. Let's go here, let's run the code. And then let's go ahead and check our Google, uh, our Slack app. And the channel says, hello world, perfect. G sheet notifier, that's the uh, Slack bot that we created and it's saying hello world. It's working as expected. So now the next step that we're gonna be doing here is to make it triggered off of our spreadsheet. So to do that, uh, we're gonna use something called uh, the on edit function. Uh, but more specifically, we're going to use the installable version of that instead of the simple trigger version of that. So we're going to add in a trigger that is going to use the on edit as the trigger for it. So we're going to say the send Slack message is the function we want to run. It's going to be the event source is from the spreadsheet. And then we're going to select the event type as on edit. And then we're going to save that. So now every single time that uh, someone edits the spreadsheet, it's going to trigger uh, the send Slack message function. And then it's up to us within this function to determine, do we even want to make that change? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an if statement here. And we're going to say E dot range. Uh, yeah, we're going to do E dot range. So dot get column. And if that is equal to, it should be three one two three for status three then we're going to do all of this otherwise we're not going to do any of this so let's grab this paste it into our if statement we can make the formatting a little bit better and then we're going to do an else statement over here and we'll just do a console log that says status was not updated the column updated was. And so we'll do the same thing there where E dot get column. So let's save this. And before we actually start sending ourselves messages, let's go ahead and comment this out. Post it in here. Status was column updated. was and then that column so let's go ahead and change one value in here let's say bob's actually going to do the project plan instead of carla so we'll change that and go into our executions log we should see that something failed actually what failed e is not defined e is not defined because i did not put it in the parameter make sure you put it in the parameter and that parameter is right up over here we need to add that in there Let's save again. And let's try that one more time. So change our minds. Carl's actually going to do the project plan. So let's put that in there. Go into our executions and we can see that it's completed. Let's see what logs status was not updated. The column updated was two. So if we go back here and then say, this is no longer done. This is actually in progress. Go back here. Wait for the next log, which appeared just here. Complete it. And refresh it until we get the logs there. Column updated was three. So perfect. So now our triggered event is targeted to just column number three, which is our status column, our column for status. And uh, we're going to use this as the basis for triggering off the Slack notification. So going back to our code here, now we have this. We don't need the console log anymore. What we're gonna do is we're gonna uncomment out all this code. And instead of doing this console, we're just gonna say return. 
And then up here, we're going to start getting the values uh, out of the triggered row. So a couple of things we're going to determine here. We're going to say var source equals to e.source. Okay, and then within there, uh, we're going to get the uh, assignee name as well as the row. So the row is pretty important because we need to know which one uh, was edited. So the row is going to be equal to e.range dot get row with the open and close parentheses because that is a function that is made available to us and now we're going to say task is equal to source dot get active sheet and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the range based on the row which is a numeric value and then we're going to do the first column because the tasks are in the first column and we're only going to get one row and one column long but make sure you don't forget to get value at the end of that so you actually get the value and not just an object now we're going to do the same thing with assignee and the assignee is going to basically be equal to the entire thing that we just wrote um, the only difference is that instead of the first column we're going to do the second column and then status uh, we're actually going to do something slightly different with the status we're going to say e dot value because that's um, th that's something that comes through the triggered event. In our text, we're going to say assignee. I'm going to string together a couple of words here. Set a task to, and then we're going to say status. And then in there, let's also add in the task just so we have that context. So now the payload, whenever someone changes the status, it's going to say um, an assignee name. So maybe that's Bob. So Bob set a task to and then done. And then it's going to out, output the task over there. So going back over to our Slack notification, let's say this is actually done. So when we hit the done, it's going to fire off the event. And what we expect to, for the text to say in Slack is to say Bob has set a task to done hyphen hyphen import data set. Click on that. Let's go check the Slack notifications. We see that it has said, Bob set a task done, import data set. And let's try this one more time. Uh, this is no longer blocked. Let's say it's done. And go back over to our Slack message. Steve set a task done, analyze data set. And let's say Carla is now uh, creating a proposal for a short term solution. She's going to say, I'm going to get that started. So I'm in progress. And then recruiting team members, Bob is going to say, I'm no longer block blocked. I'm ready to start. So we go back over to Slack. We got two new messages here. Carla said a task to in progress, create a proposal for a short term solution. And Bob said a task to ready to start recruit team members. So to make this a little bit prettier though, you can actually add in markup into the code here. So task, um, we can add in quotation marks for it. And status, if you put the little tick marks, for it, uh, you can make it look like code. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to say single quote over here. We do the same thing at the end of task. And when we save this, go back to our spreadsheet. I'm going to say maybe the long term solution is also in progress. Then we go over to our Slack, uh, our Slack channel. Carla set task to in progress and that's got the little tick marks in it to make it look like code so it's easy to read and then you have little quotations next to the task name or title so that you can clearly um, differentiate that versus the rest of the message but once um, that's basically it for this um, you know, all it took was one function over here we use an if function we made a trigger out of it and basically if the trigger is um, is made by that specific column change then we're going to do all this code otherwise we're using hit return we're going to ignore it and not do anything else but if you did run into any issues you to drop a comment in the section below we're always here to help uh, so don't be shy if you had a question or you ran into an issue about it most likely somebody else out there does as well and of course, if you did like the video, make sure to hit that like button. It's the best way to help support this channel and keep us continuing to make content for you and all those scrappy bootstrappers out there. Of course, we have lots of videos coming up, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so that you get notified when we release the next video.
but I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools. Let's build. It's been a pleasure and we're out.